Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we have a really magic piece. A true confession of love and a private confession of love. But the piece that has a lot of magic and that has huge power. The music that even has a power to save people's life. There are examples in history that this piece saved life of at least two persons during the Second World War. Nocturne in C sharp minor, sometimes also entitled Lento con gran espressione, because this is the piece that we are going to talk about tonight. And this very piece saved the life of at least two people during the Second World War, and maybe even more, but we don't know it. But two for sure. One of them, very famous, was the Polish pianist uh, Władysław Spielmann, whose story is very famous and well known because of Roman Polanski's movie called The Pianist. I'm sure most of you uh, are familiar with this very touching and dramatic movie. And yes, it was a true story. Wadysław Spielmann played this nocturne for German officer and it saved his life. But there is also, my friends, another person whose life was saved by this music. Her name was Natalia Karp. She was a Polish pianist also who was caught and based in the um, concentration camp during the Second World War. And just you imagine, the concentration camp commandant, his name was Amon Get. he knew that she can play the piano. So one day he had a birthday and he invited her to play for him. She played this nocturne. And his heart was so touched, so deeply touched, heart of a man who killed so many people. We could think that such a heart is made from a stone. And this stone was destroyed by the music of Chopin. This is really fabulous. He was so impressed with the rendition that he spared Carp's life, and not even Carp's life, but also her sister's life. Unfortunately, later she got caught again to, and went to Auschwitz, um, but she survived Auschwitz, and then she had a very long life. I think until 96 years of age, uh, as far as I remember. What is so special in this music? Why it has so much power? Probably because Chopin wrote it deeply from his heart and he wrote it with love. Love towards his sister. His si older sister. We know that Ludwika, Chopin's 
older sister, was the most loved woman in Chopin's life. I think this love was even stronger when Chopin's younger sister died very early. Uh, they appreciated more the family relationship, I'm sure. And Chopin loved his sister very much. And when he left Warsaw in 1830, he arrived to Vienna. And while being in Vienna, he sat in front of the piano and composed this music. The music that, as I said before, saved lives later. I repeat myself many times because this is so touching, so deeply touching. So let's imagine now this birthday concert for German officer and let's imagine for this was Spielmann playing this piece. You know, these pianists, both uh, Mrs. Karp and Mr. Spielmann, they had nothing to lose. They had nothing to lose. They were probably playing this piece and feeling that it's the last piece they will ever be able to play. I don't think they believed that some miracle will happen. But then Chopin, with his power, came to rescue them. Let's listen now, maybe not to the whole nocturne yet, but to the first part of the nocturne, part A. And let's think deeply about why, what is so special in this music that is so touching. Here starts part B. What is so special about this music? Sincerity? Feelings? Yes, definitely yes. Chopin had this special ability to talk about emotions with music and music that touches us deeply even if we don't listen to classical music 
so much. This very piece will touch our hearts every time we listen to it. This is expression of love, of love towards the sister. So a pure love, not any sexual love, not any passionate love towards a random person, uh, not the family. This is a sister. So the same blood. That's very deep. And Chopin had this power to write about this love using notes, using music. But now let's start the analysis of this piece, because that's why we are here. And what is very interesting in this piece is that Chopin wrote this piece and send it to Warsaw, to his sister, with uh, a short um, writing he wrote for my sister Ludwika to practice before she takes on my second concerto, concerto in F minor. Uh, this is actually a, a very mysterious, in a way. Well, in this piece Chopin quotes his second piano concerto in F minor. But what is very significant and very special is that in such a short piece of music, barely three minutes long, he managed to put some fragments from all three movements of his piano concerto. And today we are going to try to catch them. We are going to try to look for them and find them, all of them. Very fantastic way of uh, making a, a small peel out of the big concerto. The, the main um, part of the piece where we have quotations is of course the middle section, which I didn't play for you yet. Uh, but the first part is also, I would say, um, is also um, similar to Piano Concerto number two, second movement. Even though we don't have the literal quotations, but I would like us to compare those two, those two mu pieces of music, especially the left hand. If Chopin wrote to his sister, I send it to you so that you can practice that first before you will play my con piano concerto number two, that means he wanted her to improve something so that she can play better his second piano concerto. And I think that the beginning is to improve um, capabilities that the pianist must have to be able to play the larghetto, so the second movement, from piano concerto number two in a fantastic way. And what are these capabilities? First of all, long, beautiful melody, beautiful touch, beautiful sound, and also the trill. Just listen, we have the this. Let's listen and compare this to larghetto. We have... This is the first phrase, the first... well, the first motif, half of the phrase, we can say. Long... Then the trill, right? And now larghetto. And the 
trill. So this is very similar, but in, in Nocturne Chopin didn't dare to quote this spectacular music. I think even he thought that it would be too much. So instead he created a new melody, but very, very similar. This was the paraphrase of this right until we are going up we reach and here we have also the same we are going up Okay, what did he want her to improve? As I said, beautiful melody in the right hand. The trill, which should be played very softly, but uh, as well very fast, like a vibrato of a singer. But also, and most of all, left hand. Left hand that should, that has the same, the same notes i mean these notes are not the same but the same way of writing let's compare let's listen to the no nocturne first nocturne and then larghetto from piano concerto number two the same accompaniment it is the same accompaniment and it should be played very delicately as soft as possible so that the melody is on the very first plan and it's not that easy Chopin knew that it's not that easy So this is uh, mainly the connection between the first part of the Nocturne to the Piano Concerto. And now the short uh, formal structure analysis of this Nocturne. This music is so touching and it's such a, a beautiful massage for our souls because it's very naturally written. Let's listen to it again and let's talk about it first of all we have of course we have the short introduction the introduction is very special because it contains both music and the silence there is a lot of rests here. This is the first chord. Silence. 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 And we can imagine that Chopin probably was thinking that this is the uh, introduction played by the orchestra, right? Imagine the strings. And then the pianist is coming, just like in Larghetto. In Larghetto, we also have the introduction. 
played by the orchestra, this one. Exactly five bars and then the pianist is coming. Right? Coming with the first note here, just like in the nocturne. And this is so fabulous. So the idea is the same. Now let's listen to this phrase. This phrase is speaking. Is exactly speaking as if Chopin is expressing something to his sister. It's so simple yet so beautiful. First sentence, then we have and this is like the question, musical question, and then we have the answer and that's the end of the first phrase and then we have the consequent phrase that starts the same higher this opens our hearts uh, this is the variation of what we had before before we had this is the variation and now the conclusion starts part B and in part B Chopin simply starts to have fun and now I want to show you how intelligently it's written what a smart young man he was he decided to you know take a little bit from the third movement of piano concerto and put it here, then a little bit from the first movement of piano concerto, put it, then a little bit from the second movement of piano concerto, mixed everything, and voila! Here we have the beautiful music. So now let's uh, find where exactly in piano concerto number two we have the certain passages. Let's listen to this middle section first. This is the end of part B. This is built entirely by the music taken from piano concerto number two. Entirely. Okay, first of all, the first part of this part B. is exactly the beginning of the last movement of piano concerto number two. I, I 
hope you know this piece. It's very famous, right? So we have to. And here. The notes are exactly the same. The rhythm is a little bit different. But this is exactly this. And it's no coincidence. It's made on purpose. But once again. here suddenly Chopin jumps to the first movement and when we have the second theme Absolutely gorgeous. Once again. And here we have what do we have? Uh, exactly the same. And now everything is repeated. Third movement. And first movement. Now a new piece is coming. This is not piano concerto number two. But I think I said that entire the entire part B is based on piano concerto number two. I'm sorry, I was mistaken. I wanted to say that entire part B of this nocturne is based on the music from uh, other pieces that Chopin wrote when he was still in Warsaw. Because this is not really piano concerto number two, but this is Chopin's very famous song called Maiden's Wish. And I'm sure you know this song. It's this song. Um, this is very, very famous. And let's listen to it again. Uh, Listen to this moment. It's exactly the same. Of course, it's a little bit hidden, but it's exactly the same. And then what we have immediately after that? This is fantastic. Just listen. The first theme, theme of the, the piano concerto. That's how starts this concerto. And here we have the same thing. Uh, fantastic, fantastic to compose a piece that is a mixture of many short motifs of, of other pieces. Of, it's absolutely great. And then we have another motif from Piano Concerto. <laughs> is the mazurka that Chopin includes in um, the, his the finale, the last movement of his piano concerto. It's exactly... <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Of course, very famous theme. And here we have the same. This is, my friends, the ending of second movement. Yes, second movement of piano concerto number two ends this way, this like this. And this is absolutely amazing. Now, these are exactly the same notes the same notes the same notes this is exactly a copy without even changing the key and in piano concerto after that we have yes here we have we come back to part A of the Nocturne and part A of the Nocturne is a little different. Let's listen. The first phrase. And now we have immediately the like the second phrase from the beginning. dramatic. Here Chopin is saying that, oh my sister, you are so far away. Uh, why can't we be together again? Chopin is uh, writing uh, to his sister an etude of scale playing, exercise of scale playing, very light scales that makes this ending so magic. One time, second time. Here we have the very fine moment when this all this scale is in the background because Chopin writes the, the accent on the note and that this is like the background and then and two times more and one time Everything ends in major. So, yes, Ludvika, we will see each other again. We will. And Chopin was right. They would see each other again. And so this optimism in the end um, was true. This piece is very touching indeed and very often it even brings tears in our eyes and especially when we think about all these examples of Jewish uh, pianists who were saved because of this music that makes it even, uh, even more touching. So now let's listen to the whole piece uh, of music called Lento con gran espressione. 
And let's enjoy this touching music one more time in these circumstances in my, my practice room. Um, because, of course, there is also another recording of mine on YouTube from the concert in Japan. You can find it and watch it. But every performance is different, so now I will play it for you one more time.
Thank you very much and see you again.